The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 363 Mercenary Force Dark wind! Harshwater complained, bowed beneath the weight of a huge stack of paintings strapped to her back and balanced with her wings. These paintings are heavy! Help me carry them! Darkwind didn't look back, pacing in front of her with his eyes closed and mane hanging in front of him. Now, think about how much more they'll mean to you having done the work to get him back yourself. Besides, we're inside a compound. Surely you can manage a few more steps. You're mean, Harshwater pounded, resigning herself to lugging her load. Was, Valet taunted, back stroking through the shadow cast by Harshwater's giant load in the dim emergency lighting. Mana conduits lined the roof of the tunnel, but their glow was sickly and wan, as if barely enough power was being fed through them to keep the reaction active at all. We ditched the cart like five minutes ago! We ditched the cart like five minutes ago! And at least you're hauling that because you want to! Sometimes Herman made me move heavy stuff just to annoy me! That doesn't make it any less heavy, Harshwater panted. Valet rubbed her chin. I tell you to think of bananas to distract yourself or something, but I get the feeling you'd interpret that the wrong way. Gerardo loudly cleared his throat. Perhaps we might track this conversation onto something more suitable than antagonizing our present hosts and benefactors. This is, after all, the home. The entry tunnel opened into a hallway flanked with two rows of pillars that provided both ornamentation and easy cover for defenders, and that passed through a sturdy, unsealed metal door into a broad atrium of sorts. There were two floors, with staircases around the edges that led to balconies, catwalks, and an upper level that was bigger and more open than the bottom one. Service windows lined the edges in something between a mall and a food court, and round tables were placed everywhere it wouldn't be inconvenient, hosting ponies who were eating, chatting, and playing at least one very intense card game. Mayors and stallions of all pony types, ranging everywhere from 10 to 50, looked up, waved, or continued what they were doing, walking past on the upper level or staffing counters for clothing repair and financial transactions and maintenance on tools and weapons. It's like a city within a city, Gerardo Marvel, smiling and impressed. I suppose you weren't jesting about being far more tight-knit than a mere mercenary group. Iron Ridge with an extended deployment mission, Darkwind replied, nodding back to several ponies and leading the group towards an understated door behind a staircase. We have been in the city for approximately six years now, though part of the team took the ship and left to do missions abroad for a time easily on. It's only within the last few years that we've all been here, combining our forces. Usually, our ship has all the facilities we need to function as a base for short missions and between deployments. But when we're in it for the long haul, like Vasidel before this, we try to get a fuller facility. This base is still half taken down since we were packing to leave in a hurry on the night of the storm and haven't needed to set everything back up after it turned out we were staying. It's a lot more of a civilian complex now than a military compound, though we can still defend it in a pinch. Gerardo nodded. Indeed, this was because your ship mysteriously went missing, is it not? As Darkwind started talking about leads and tracking devices and how Iron Ridge's air power was presently limited to Shinespark's ship alone, Valet huffed internally. Her cutie mark wasn't bothering her, but she knew showing her head while surrounded by more mercenaries than she had dealt with in the Flame District would produce a tense and awkward conversation at best, and the ponies hanging out in the atrium had to be less than half of their total forces. Keeping her head low to avoid detection, she peered at everyone from cute, smiling mares to buff, grizzled combat veterans, reminding herself that each and every one of them could go from a cheerful, sandwich-eating bystander to an epic ninja at the drop of a hat. It almost made her wings flutter to think about. If it weren't for how close this group of ponies had come to killing her, the prospect of so many opponents who really knew what they were doing in a fight would be positively exciting. Darkwind! A set of hoofs came pounding up behind them, and Valet slipped deeper into Harshwater's shadow, closing her eyes against the confounding visuals that came with shadow sneaking. Glad you're back, a young stallion's voice panted. I saw you come in and needed to let you know that a maintenance crew apparently botched the reactivation of the water heating system, something to do with corroded pipes. Basically, we'll be having cold showers for a few days longer at least. Oh, yes! Harshwater stomped a hoof, and Valet swerved to avoid it. I love cold showers! I'll take it into consideration, Darkwind's voice replied. 
Considering our power rationing from Blue Leaf, water heating shouldn't be a priority anyway. If you need to work on plumbing, focus on filtration and recycling systems that can be used without any energy, since the reservoir can't be used to regulate water supply from the Sky District runoff anymore. And tell them to turn the lights down. It'll reflect poorly on us if we're seen as getting special treatment from Sky Freeze, and we don't need them to right to see. Yes, sir. The stallion saluted with a hoof, indicating he wasn't the Pegasus. We're already using the emergency lighting, but yes, sir. Also, um, if I might ask, what's harsh water carrying? Harshwater chuckled darkly. Treasure. We just got back from cleaning out Kira's old room in Sky Freeze, Darkman said. He had some things the new owners decided they sorely wouldn't miss. Harshwater volunteered to dispose of them and save us all the trouble. And now, Harshwater grunted, taking more steps forward, I'm putting these in my room. Well, I'm very happy for you. The new stallion sounded more nervous than happy. If that's all, I'll be on my way. Darkman turned away. You're the one who wanted me. But if you're looking for something to do, go to the nursery and tell whomever's on duty I'll be by soon with guests. The stallion saluted again and raced away, and once he was gone, Gerardo sighed. Not even a mention of my presence. Were we truly not that memorable of opponents? You did go down pretty easily, Harshwater grumbled. Yet least, well, he's hiding, and I did offer you a rematch. Valet poked her eyes and mouth above the surface since they were in a back corridor with no prying eyes. You think I should come out? I might cause a hullabaloo just by being here, you know. Darkwin shrugged. That's your call. Everyone knows we aren't trying to catch you anymore. I also respect your strength and won't cause trouble if you make it clear you're not looking for it. Though, if you're not looking to stay here for a while, it might be better to save yourself the effort. <laughs> The league last away. Several turns later, Harshwater reached her room, promptly kicking the lay out of her shadow as she maneuvered her stack of pennies through. Ah! Oh, she proclaimed, setting them all down. Rare! Perfect! All right, I'm good! Congratulations on your acquisition, Gerardo nodded, standing politely by and not barging into her quarters. Now that that's taken care of, I believe there was something else we came here to do? Enjoying ourselves? Hanging out? We have a pool. Harshwater rolled her shoulders, flexing stiff muscles. Ow! That was bad for my delicate Pegasus posture. Darkman said nothing, giving Valet and Gerardo a look that made it clear that they were the guests and could stay or leave as they pleased. Yeah, Valet sniffed the air. Starlight's a ways away. Pretty sure she's still down in those caves. You know what? She grinned. I'm feeling bold. Let's go march into a crowded space and be all... I am here, and see if we can spook some dudes. Then, make sure it's all in good fun. In that order. Right now, I kind of want to do something just because I can. Try not to laugh too evilly, Darkman advised, nodding in permission. Not many of us have met you after the events in the Flame District, and a lot of ponies will be looking for signals if they don't hold our assault against us. Starlight? Harshwater glanced sideways at her. How do you know where she is? Yeah, Billy shrugged, tapping the tip of her nose. I can smell her at a distance. No clue why. But it's useful sometimes, so why question it? Hushwater blinked. Weird. Story of my life, Ali said unapologetically, preparing to round a corner. If that was even a tenth of the weirdest... Whoa! She backed that thanks to a cutie mark, but not in time to avoid a collision with a mare walking around the corner. Valet took a glancing hit, but the other mare sat back, rubbing her nuzzle with a hoof. Eh, Valet blinked. Sorry? Oh my, I'm so sorry. I wasn't looking where I was. The mare, a unicorn, blinked back, eyes widening as she recognized who had just hit. Admiral Valet! It's you! She broke out into a smile. Valet folded one ear. And then the other. Really? It's me? That's the reaction I get? You're happy to literally run into me sneaking around your home? Not... Abject terror, or maybe vengeance for kicking someone's rear in the flame district, or the very least horny awe of my ridiculous new main cut? She rubbed the back of her head with a huff. I'm pretty sure that bow isn't still there. Ha! Gerardo crowed, interrupting. It seems as we are popular with the locals after all. Whatever you've done, I heartily approve. Bow? The unicorn's face scrunched and she ignored Gerardo. Terror? I'm grateful. Thank you for not killing my brother in the Flame District. Valet 
stopped her with a huff. Okay, hold up. One more time? The new mayor looked slightly worried, but repeated herself. When Kira said we had a job to take you out in the Flame District, everyone was worried because you have a reputation and we're just normal mercenaries. But you left everyone who went down there alive. I wanted to thank you for sparing my friends and family, even though we weren't trying to do the same for you. Then she got down and bowed, leaving Valet's jaw slack. Hold on. What? Valet looked around. Does everyone here feel that way? That's my reception here? Everyone thinks I'm Hero McHero Face or something? Harshwater scuffed at the ground unhappily with a huff. I don't like to admit it, but you easily could have killed me several times and we all knew it going in. But you didn't, so... Sixteen Pegasi faced you in the tunnels, Darkwin said. It's hardly the majority of a company, but enough that almost everyone had a sibling, parent, lover, or best friend with their lives put on the line. Nobody expected it to be bloodless, and many thought we wouldn't succeed at all. Some even wonder if it's not a coincidence that the last job gave us before disappearing had such a high projected cost. Whatever he deemed a fair price for that would have been high, but now he's gone before any of us see any of it. He closed his eyes. But yes, most everyone here has loved ones you didn't kill, even when it would have increased your own ads of survival. Normally, if it counts as risking your life to save someone, but when the ones you're saving are your enemies? Let's just say there are a lot of ponies here who are fans of yours. Wow! Vlee blinked several times. Like, for real? Because speaking of weird things that happened to me... The new mayor nodded. It sounds like I'm the first you're hearing this from? Well, on behalf of everyone... She looked Valet straight in the eye. I hope you've forgiven us for fighting you and for working for Herman when he was trying to destroy Einrich. All of us are indebted to you. Thank you. Huh. Valet sat there, almost dizzy, and let herself smile. You know, I think I could get used to this. End of chapter 363